side quest to British Columbia, to moonlit hikes in the LA aqueduct and snow draped peaks of the Sierra, this chapter was full of adventure and self discovery. In late May, I made a detour off trail, trading the dirt beneath my feet for the skies. I flew from LA to Vancouver. Waiting there were faces I hadn't seen in almost a decade. But I wasn't just leaving the trail, but also new friendships. Friends that, upon my return, would be miles ahead, letting go of connections forged on trail. All right, hello from Vancouver Airport. I have just gotten through security. 10 minutes before my flight is boarding. I'm living a little bit on the edge. And yeah, flying to Los Angeles. Hello from Agua Dulce. Just got dropped off from my Uber drive from Los Angeles. And I'm walking now to Serenity Oasis. This is the cleanest I'm going to be in the next six days, maybe longer, who knows, but feels good to be back on trail. Hiking alone, my vulnerability surfaced. Can I do this? Will I meet new friends? It was daunting at first, but I grew to love the freedom. The trail ensured I was never truly alone. I quickly made new friends, got a new trail name, Beetlejuice, and felt the magic of human connection. Last day in the desert section. It's been almost two months from Campo to Kennedy Meadows for me. Lots of amazing scenery, amazing town days, zeros, traveling up to Canada. And the time has finally come to get to a big milestone of Kennedy Meadows, which shows the end of desert section and going into the mountainous area of Sierra Nevadas, which are still full of snow. camp at around six o'clock at night. I think about maybe 9,300 feet in elevation, which is the highest that I've been, uh, which is really cool. My ears popped twice climbing up and it was a very steep climb. A lot less like switchbacks and just like straight up. So I definitely thought I was gonna keel over, but made it and had some nice mashed potatoes for dinner. Nice and warm. I'm gonna get in my tent probably very soon. And then tomorrow is snow day. So I'm feeling excited. We're going to be walking in snow, I guess, most of the day, I assume. So I haven't done multiple consecutive days of snow. So I'm curious to see how I'm going to feel, how fast I'll go, how tired I'm gonna be. So I'm excited for the snow, but also a little hmm, apprehensive of how, how it's gonna go. But I'm really happy I'm out here. The Sierras are fucking gorgeous, excuse my French. Um, and yeah, even if it's just a small section that I'm able to do, I'm really happy that I'm out here and it feels the scenery is exactly what I want. The valleys, the high mountains, the meadows, the gorgeous streams and rivers everywhere. So yeah, having fun, a little cold, a little tired, but it's all, it's all worthwhile. side quest, off trail, to climb some rocks. A pretty epic view. I'm pretty sure Mount Whitney's behind me. I'm gonna go check it out. Gone were the days of easily covering 22 miles in the desert out here, even eight to 10 miles of snow slogging was the maximum I could achieve. 
the Sierra was a test of patience and persistence. The snow was melting fast, removing any existing boot track to help follow the trail. Snow cups, shaped by the sun, made each step a game of focus. This is a prime example of what we call sun cups in the Sierras, which are just weird holes in the snow created by the sun. And I'm gonna try to walk in them, which is what we've been doing for the last few days, but this meadow specifically is kind of hard, so here it goes. Getting up to 12,000 feet. And all I want to do is get to camp, eat food, drink water, and sleep. But I can't, because I still have another, I don't know, hour and a half before I can make it to camp, because I'm super slow. And the snow makes me super slow. It's pretty amazing up here. So quiet. Just hear a little bit of wind. Streams down below. I can hear my heart racing. <laughs> ah, made it to camp. Yay! And the views are sick. Look at this. Look at these views. Boom. Pretty badass views. Steven? Ah, uh, sliding to my imminent demise. <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of fun. <laughs> Let's do it. Alright, ready? Mm -hmm. Backpack secure. Your backpack is secure. Woohoo! <laughs> okay, it's on us. He's gone! Climbing up Mount Whitney. Yes. No, Sun's no, coming no. up. Smile. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's taking videos. <laughs> An artifact. <laughs> Quick update on the Mount Whitney adventure. It's seven o'clock, so Artifact and I have been hiking for about four hours. Um, we're 1.2 miles away from the top, which is super exciting. And currently at 13,700 feet. Definitely feeling the elevation. Um, feeling a bit kind of tired and a bit of pressure in the head. Um, but feeling good. I think we've done the most complicated climb so far. It's quite dry up here, so no snow. Uh, yeah, a little bit of technical stuff down below where it's just walking straight up a very steep mountain and using your ice axe and crampons and hoping it holds, and it did because it's very hard snow. We are reaching the summit of Mount Whitney. Very short of breath, but we're so close. How are you feeling, Artifact? How are you feeling? Feeling the elevation, but we're almost there. Hard to beat the views. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Made it to the top! 14,500. Definitely the highest that I've ever been in my entire life. I have never climbed or summited a mountain. And here I am. Yay! Feels great. Mount Whitney yesterday. I'm still in absolute awe and so proud of myself that I did that. There's no way I ever thought I was going to be able to do that, especially in the snow, but also the elevation being at 14,500 feet. Um, yeah, it was pretty crazy. It was a really fun experience. I'm feeling so exhausted today. A little bit of like elevation hangover, as they call it, so I have a really bad headache. Um, didn't sleep well because I think I was just like still quite stressed from the day and wasn't really able to fully decompress. 
So very tired, very slow going, but need to push on. We have Forester Pass coming up tomorrow, which is also another really um, sketchy, I would say, uh, pass. It's yeah, really steep um, traverse in the snow. And yeah, if you have vertigo, it's kind of terrifying. So I'm a little bit nervous for that. Getting pretty bored of the snow and the fact that it gets slushy at like 11. And you're just kind of slipping and sliding. What I'm doing now, it's 11.30. Um, I don't really think we're gonna see ground for maybe like two or three days because we're climbing elevation. We obviously were at 14,000 yesterday with Whitney. Came back down at camp to around 11,000. And tomorrow we're doing Forester Pass, which is 13,000. So continue in the high elevation points, and, which means snow. I think I'm following the wrong boot track. Crap. Keep getting lost. It's really hard to navigate in snow because the trail's under the snow. And so you're reliant on boot track. And sometimes I follow sun cups instead of the boot track. And sometimes I follow the wrong boot track. And my hiking partner, Artifact, oh, is ahead of me. Can't find him, so <laughs> I'm gonna go try to find him. Oops. Approaching Forester Pass, which is at 13,000 feet of elevation. And this section is sketchy, challenging, terrifying for many reasons. Um, reason one is the snow. As you can see, we are covered in snow. It is mid-June and the snow is slowly melting, but there's still a lot of snow up here. And so the um, traverses on Forester Pass are going to be snow covered, so really important to try to get to the um, challenging traverses, which is called the chute. Um, very high up and very steep, and I'm absolutely petrified when I get there. Not too early, so the snow isn't super hard that we're not able to um, yeah, penetrate the snow with our crampons and ice axe. But on the other hand, you don't want to get there too late where it's so slushy that you can't get any traction with your snow gear. So really trying to time that well. So that's, um, yeah, a pretty tough part. And then, yeah, just really the, the steepness. If you have any kind of vertigo, even if you don't have vertigo, you have vertigo up there because it's super high and steep. It's about 30 feet where it gets pretty sketchy. Um, and we've already had a few hikers turn back that we saw yesterday because of the information they recently received from the ranger um, of current conditions, of it being a little, little, um, I guess more trickier with the boot track disappearing because of the melting snow. Um, so that really put me in, in question if I should be continuing or, or turning back, but we've pushed forward. Artifact and I have decided to, to push forward, get there, get to the top, at the chute, which is the probably the sketchiest section, and if we're not feeling it, turn around. Um, so we're, we're very much prepared to turn around. Safety is number one out here. Um, putting my ego aside, I have many loved ones waiting for me at home, and most important is to get back in one piece for them. So yeah, I'll see how it goes, but I'm I'm, I'm stressed. I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> I don't like heights in the first place and 13,000 feet up in the sky with snow and yeah, difficult traverses is going to be uh, a challenge. So we'll see how that goes. Just a couple more steps. Okay. Well done. Okay. Okay, that was okay. That was fine. Yeah. Well done. <sighs> Yay! Ah, oh, okay, that was, that was fine. I began to question my choice of tackling the Sierra. Questions danced in my mind. 
Where are all the other hikers? Was this a fool's journey? With my pace, would Canada remain a distant dream? But then, the joys like glissading, a thrilling slide down snowy slopes would remind me of the beauty in challenges. All right, made enough for a pass with the craziest hair I've ever seen. Oh, it's very windy, it's cold. There's some clouds coming in, so we gotta get down fast as well, but yeah, we did it. Goodbye shoes. Thank you for saving me in the Sierras and also falling apart. All right, hello from Bishop. Been here for three nights. The longer I stay in Bishop, the more tired I get, which is definitely an indication that the last stretch between Cottonwood Pass and Kursarge was yeah, very exhausting, and my body is telling me that I need to rest. So that's what I'm doing, hanging out in a hammock, having a little nap, found some shade, and yeah, it's been uh, it's been a tough section. I can't remember how many miles is Cottonwood between Kursarge, but it's not a ton. Probably should usually on average take maybe like four or five days, and it took us eight days because of just the snow and the slog and just really long, hard days waking up early in the dark, around three, uh, walking with your headlamp, freezing your ass off, waiting for the sun to come up to warm you up, and um, doing that for about 12 hours a day. So it's, yeah, been really tough, but just so rewarding. I feel like every morning I'm a little bit grumpy, and then as soon as the sun comes up and you see these gorgeous sunrise, these beautiful colors, hues of blues and pinks and oranges, and just these insane views of these high, steep mountains covered in snow. It's the most rewarding thing I've ever done. Uh, so I'm really proud of myself. Not something that I expected to be doing uh, in the PCT. I had it pretty pretty convinced that I would be skipping this section and coming back in September once the snow was melted. But I last minute decided to go in. in Kennedy Meadows. I felt pretty motivated to see other people going in and I'm with a hiking partner, Artifact, who has really good experience mountaineering and snow. So I feel really comfortable with him and I'm always up for a challenge. And I'm really happy that I said yes yet again to this opportunity because there's not many PCT hikers this year that have gone in. Maybe like 10 to 15% are going into the Sierras versus flipping up north. So it feels really special. Really special. But yeah, I'm tired. So I'm just going to chill in this hammock for a few hours, do nothing, take some time for myself as well. I haven't had a lot of alone time in the last few weeks and definitely missing some me time. So I'll listen to some music, nap, enjoy the shade and the hammock. Hammocks are literally my happy place, so I'm just so happy right now. The Sierra weren't just mountains. They were a transformative experience. They challenged me, rewarded me, and showed that pushing boundaries can lead to amazing discoveries. Exiting the Sierra at Cursarge Pass, I was reborn, stronger, more alive, brimming with gratitude. While the snow had tested me, the allure of dirt trails beckoned. North California, I'm on my way.